Hey everyone, we had a lot of great questions from the live stream and while we didn't get to it in the live stream, we wanted to just take a few minutes to try to answer as many of them as we can. Let's do this. Well, the first one is, what is the recommendation to generate code? Should I do a full screen with as much details as possible in the prompts or component by component? And I think this is actually an interesting one. I am going to give the traditional advocate answer of it depends. And the way that I like to think about this is trying to follow your mental model as a developer of the amount of information that you want to provide for what you're trying to build. So if you have a quick prototype, something simple, um, it's great to use it as a one shot. Mm -hmm. But if you're working in like a robust uh, production environment, this is where the more specificity that you have, the better your outputs will be by being able to look at specific components, being able to look at which components already exist to assemble them together um, and all those other scenarios. Yeah, I think like maybe we should phrase it as try to break it down as you would have built it on mm -hmm. your own. So like if it's a full landing page, you would never do one screenshot generate this unless it's a prototype and you don't really care about it. Mm -hmm. and if it's a prototype, go for it. Do one as long as it's not filling up all of your context window, go for it, but it may. Um, but if you actually want it to be credible, high quality code, making sure that the model would not miss anything, you should probably break it down. Uh, break it down to sections like you would have. So if you have uh, the landing pages that we showed before, we had a pricing section, a footer, a header. Mm -hmm. So like logical breakdown would help both the agent do a better job and also make sure that the context is not being spammed. Yep. Another question that we got is, will we be able to write back two variables with the MCP? So can we write back variables? At the moment, we cannot. Um, at the moment, everything that we're doing on the MCP is read only, but uh, we are hearing you. And we know that we have a lot of like write back requests and this is definitely something that we will be happy to solve in the near future. For some of our more enterprising developers who are familiar with our plugin in REST API, one interesting hacky use case for the MCP is actually to bring in the plugin API and help have the MCP help you write plugin integrations or even REST API integrations where you can manipulate variables directly. And the nice thing about this is that those integrations will be deterministic and you can use them over and over as part of your broader infrastructure of design tools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very cool hack. Uh, we'll try to do both like though. <laughs> I, like, I, I love the stress on hack. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I don't want people to think like they need to write new oh, plugins to do stuff. Yeah. You can, you can always do that, but we will try to find a native solution for you as well. If data from Figma MCP is the source of truth, could it be used to perform QA on live builds? That's a really interesting question. I don't have a great answer for that, except this is the type of feedback that our team loves to see because it helps expand our broader vision for what MCP can be. Um, so the team will definitely take a look at this mm -hmm. and think about it. Next one. Where can I find the MCP to connect my cursor agent? Let's walk through it really quickly. So on my screen, we have Figma enabled. Um, the first thing that I want to make sure is that the MCP server is enabled. And the way that we can do that is, again, in dev mode, deselect everything on the screen, and then we see our MCP server panel and make sure that the status here is enabled. Once we've done that, we can actually switch over to cursor. I'm going to go to my cursor settings, search for MCP, click on MCP tools, and I can actually click on new MCP server. There's, actually, there's usually a Figma button that you can just click on connect and it'll add the right things. But if not, you can go to your mcp.json down here and just copy and paste these values specifically where the URL should be localhost 3845 SSE. And once you've got that going and you go back to your cursor settings, you can see that it's enabled. So I'm gonna turn it off, turn it back on. We see that we have three tools enabled and we can see the different tools that we have enabled. Just hijacking this one because we did have a lot of questions around that. Um, if the tools are not loading, hanging, red, usually what you need to do is refresh cursor, like close it, open it again, or the Figma app, and then it will work. Mm -hmm. The age old, have you tried turning it off yes, and on again? I know, it's the worst, but it works. <laughs> Next one. I have a design system set in Figma where I define variables, colors, font, etc. Does the MCP also provide that information to the agent so it can create the equivalent values in the code? Yeah, 
that's exactly what we were doing in our live stream, which is every selection that we had, it had access to the component data that was there, it had access to the underlying variables. Um, so if you're using a screen that's already taking into account components, that information will be coming through. Um, but you can also use this as a way to flesh out and build your design system, mm -hmm. if that's what you mean. So if you have your design system files and you want to start the process of converting those things into code, you can use the MCB server to start taking things like your variable definitions and your color definitions, um, even building out components. And you can use the MCP server to help inform and build those things out. Yeah, we've totally seen users using the MCP for both scenarios of like, I already have some stuff in the code and components and I want to build like screens around it, or I'm building components from scratch. Um, so both cases you can. Um, just a reminder, at the moment, you'll need to select what you want in, in order to fetch it to your MCP. You wouldn't be able to tell it to fetch all of my colors or all of my components from this file. Last one, what is the advantage of using Figma's MCP versus the third-party ones? So the advantage of using the Figma MCP versus third-party uh, MCPs is that a lot of the third-party MCPs uh, rely on Figma's REST APIs mm -hmm. um, and plugin APIs, and those don't have access to the full context of Figma design. Mm -hmm. And our first-party MCP will be a secure way for you to be able to get all this access, use your own, uh, use your own agents, mm -hmm. but also get additional tools and context and metadata that doesn't currently get surfaced in the REST API. Yeah, like Code Connect, variables, and like across all all plans. Yep. Um, annotations that we just showed. Exactly. So. That wraps up all the questions that we have time for today. But feel free to continue sending us feedback, as much feedback as possible for the Figma Dev Mode MCP server, through the panel, inside the product, in the forum, socials, wherever you want. We're in the comments tab over here. And we're looking forward to seeing you again. Bye.